Hello creatives, welcome to Artist Star. My name is Beth and I am at the gallery today for the Zodiac series. And this reading is for Aries, whose major arcana card is the Emperor. And this is the artist card representing you as that open vessel, ready to receive whatever source can draw from the well of creativity. So Aries, this is a new spread. It is called Full Moon Gratitude. We are beginning 2022. We are still in Capricorn season and we are about to experience a full moon. So what better way to bring in 2022 with some gratitude? All right, so this first row here, this is in what area of life is my fullest creative vibration at this time? For that, we will use the archetype cards, clarifying with the Muse cards, Cards of Truth and Lenormand. Second row here is how best to begin to tap this energy. For that, we're going to use the Creativity Oracle. And then in this third row here is what would help to acknowledge and release at this time. So for that, we're going to use the Soul's Journey deck. And last but not least, we are going to ask Source what else they would like to share with you. And for that, I pulled a Moon card and a Starseed card. Let's see if they can give us just that little bit more to help clarify and cement whatever message the cards have for you today. All right, so let's get started. Look to this first row and the archetype card to find out what area of life is your fullest creative vibration at this time. Child nature. This is beautiful. All right, so the light attributes, friendship with animals, communication with nature spirits. And the shadow side is, of course, the tendency to be abusive around animals, people, and the environment. So, yeah, well, you know, this light attribute of the friendship with the nature and <clears throat> being able to connect with nature's spirit and having that ability to, that, that inner inner toughness, that inner ability to just be able to survive through natural forces, all of that, um, well, and, and to be inspired and have that intimate bonding with the natural forces. So you really know how to bond with your, your uh, environment and be able to consider everything about natural nature to get to where you're going. So that's a very interesting place to be holding all of this creative vibration. So yeah, it is about being in touch with the natural forces. That's not bad. That sounds pretty good. So let's take a look at the Muse card and see if we can clarify a little. Okay, so you got the Lovers card. This is an interesting card to get here because as in the Tarot, it is the same in the Muse deck. It's about entanglements. It's about knowing your place with, within relationships and what it is that you are doing at this time of connecting and being with other people, places, and things. Because the lover's card is not just about the emotional connection with someone else. It can be emotional connections around many things and the entanglements that go with that. So interesting that you should get this with the, with the nature card. So lovers and how you connect and embrace and hmm, 
with all that natural nature force. Let's see if the cards can, truth can give us a little more. Eight of hearts, very interesting card to get here. This is you being very stable, very self-sufficient, understanding yourself emotionally very well. It is you being up in all about you and knowing, knowing yourself very well. It is sincere friendship. It is um, Rahu energy being of the eight. This is where you want to uh, travel into to explore and experiment with all of that finding emotional satisfaction, that self-care. So interesting. Hmm. Yet there's some entanglement here with someone, something, or someone else, an emotional figuring things out, being in the thick of it, feeling like it is a natural force to be reckoned with. Something coming your way with, hmm, maybe to sharpen that to improve upon it for yourself. Let's see what the Lenormand cards have. The Lucky Clover. This is very good to have here because whatever situation you are in at this time or just maybe realizing some of the entanglements, you know, after you've begun the begin with someone or some place or something, that you have just fallen in love with, made this really nice connection with, when the gloss wears off, <laughs> there is all of this uh, reveal of what's underneath. You know, it is all the, well, entanglements is a very good word for it because then you start to realize your motives and their motives or how uh, you've gotten to be entangled in this relationship with whatever it is. This is big energy. Hmm. Aries with you being such a strong personality, knowing exactly the strength that you possess. Feels a little bit like being hoodwinked that you've fallen in love with something that might have taken you out of that really lovely connection that you have, that natural ability to just connect with the natural forces of whatever it is, even if it's the emotional force of something. Hmm. All right, well, that's big energy nonetheless because it might be a little confusing at times to figure out the entanglements and your part in them, but wow, what a lot of energy to be able to <clears throat> embody and, yeah, tap into. Let's see what the next thing is here because this is how best to begin the begin, tapping into this energy. All right, creativity oracle, let go. What, if anything, can be done to let go of what is standing in your way? Hmm. What, if anything, can be done to let go of what is standing in your way? almost suggests that you're standing in your own way. Huh. And here's the other side of that, which I will leave up so that you can look at it while I do the rest of the reading. But you can see there's this very colorful butterfly being let go of. It's like all the chakra colors there. There's birds, there's flowers, there's this beautiful night sky. It is letting go of things that are ready. As you can see, there's this 
skeleton here. So it suggests that it has just run its course. It's had its season and it's time to let something go. What if anything can be done to let go of what is standing in your way? So it could be you standing in your own way. It could be letting go of something that you need to let go of so that you can move on. Hmm, okay. Well, let's get some clarity here with the muse. <laughs> the death card. <laughs> but of course, <laughs> letting go. More letting go. Wow, wow, that is a very strong message. You've got the moth here. You've got the butterfly here. You've got these wrapped figures as if mummified within a web and it's all contained within the self, in your mind, right? There are two places here, one to be released from and one to travel into. But it is a transformation. Death is transformation. It's letting go at its highest asking and it is recognizing what it is that needs to be let go of, right? It is, yeah, figuring it out. You probably have some inkling as to what that is already. You have a very strong foundation, Aries. We know that emotionally you are very strong. But we can all be, well, tricked, if you will, from time to time, or maybe not tricked, but maybe wanting to believe in something so badly that it feels so right that you go ahead and go for it, get hoodwinked a little bit, maybe not even, but maybe it's just moving too quickly into something and losing sight of that natural nature connections that you, you clearly embody. Hmm, all right, well, let's look at the cards of truth. King of Hearts. Yeah, now you see, this is all about, again, it, it is an elimination. The kings, they are, they create through, through dis destruction and transformation and deconstruct to reconstruct. And of course, it's off the emotional realm. But the kings, they do things the way things need to get done. They are decisive and they know when to just be done with something. King of Hearts is that grandpa card where it is the ultimate way to parent, to know beautifully how to unentangle oneself and to know what needs to be let go of emotionally in order to begin building something new. You gotta let something go, release that, transform that energy that you've now understand beautifully because you are such a stable emotional self and luck is on your side with this. Hmm. Of course, all letting go sometimes is very painful and very uh, emotionally charged, which this reading certainly suggests that's the case. So let's look at the Lenormand card. Well, you've got the gentleman, which is really nice. This just doubles down on this king's energy here. It is all about having, uh, being held in high regard and there, this fortune for you, this luckiness that is here. And if I can do my reading for you, 
well enough to have this message come through for you, you should be able to embody it to the best of your abilities, should be able to give you what you need in this reading. Thank you, Source, for that. Hopefully, I, I do you justice. So, yeah. Transformation through destruction at its highest. But it is also having that ability to transform through any circumstance, understanding that it is a letting go of a lower self that, that has limitations and that that's necessary for that spiritual growth to reconnect to something of more substance. You got to move away from, well, self justifying and move into something that is of that nobleness of knowing how to let something go and hang on to your noble self while you do it to the best of everybody's benefit or lessons learned, because that is also the ultimate king experience, to be able to do that with kindness and generosity and all the good stuff for yourself and for the other party with complete honesty. Wow. Okay, so let's move on to the third row and see what would help to acknowledge and to release at this time. Let's see what the soul's journey has for you. Blame. I accept responsibility for my well-being. Well, this does speak directly to that king of hearts. It is all of those emotions that you Oh, put yourself through when you realize that something is not what it appeared to be. That it is something you either put your rose-colored glasses on to see and wanted to believe in it, what you told yourself. And then, of course, through the light of day and enlightenment of source and just being your very solid emotional self started to see the cracks. Yeah. And now what to do with that? After you've either blamed yourself for not seeing it sooner or blamed them for hiding something from you that they knew was not going to be able to sustain the relationship. Now, this could be another person, but as I said in the beginning, it could also be about you just having those rose-colored glasses on about anything. This could be about your craft, about being honest with your creativity and realizing that it's time to rethink it. Try not to blame yourself or, you know, look at that, of course, and understand where that blame is coming from and exercise it, right? Pull that thread, get to the bottom of it. Where does that lead you? There is great knowledge in that. Beautiful self-knowledge for you to understand you all the better for it. For this amazing, amazing emotional transformation. Wow. Okay. So, letting go of the blame. Understanding it so that you can let it go at the best possible level. Let's see what the Muse card has. Seven of Voices. This is a trickery card. This is 
someone or something, or again, it could be you telling yourself something, wanting to believe it, but in the end, it's just not true. It's false. It is being tricked. Trickster card. Whether you're tricking yourself or someone is tricking you or trying to. <laughs> Not anymore. This is telling me that you've seen it. You know it. You just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> it's a load. It is a load of emotional yeah, baggage that needs to be let go of, transformed. Let's say that. Let's deconstruct and transform it into something fabulous. Because you have every possibility here to be able to do that. Letting in that nature, that communication with spirit and nature, just that natural ability for you to connect on an emotional level. Mm. All right, let's see what the cards of truth have here. Six of car hearts in reverse. So yeah, there's been a little bit of an upset and this is saying that again, it is lover's energy, um, Venus energy anyway. It is devil energy in the cards of truth. So it is again sorting through what needs to stay, what's working, what's not working, making choices that are healthy, and doing the right thing by all. So it is this organic connection with your emotions. It's upside down, right? So it's a little topsy-turvy right now. You haven't exactly pulled the thread yet on what it is that got you here, but now you know to do just that and that that is the piece that you need to transform, to let go, let source be able to do this for you because you don't want to be in that victim role of, of just having that weakness of giving your power away because every time you're unable to do this transformation or just in order to be able to do this transformation at its core best you need to let go of blaming yourself get out of the giving your power away and understanding that to blame others or to blame yourself makes you a victim and if you are in a victim role then you know it's not the most powerful place to be <laughs> so take the power do the transformation Pull the thread on what you're feeling at this time and work it through because it's this entanglement of like a spider's web, the stickiness. You have it here in this death card, right? And you have it here in this transformation card. So it is all about getting detached from it. Step back, understand it as a natural role for this situation to take. That stay in that loving kindness for yourself, the king's ultimate message for you, and that nobleness of doing the right thing emotionally for the betterment of yourself and everyone else and everything else involved. All right, let's see what the Lenormand has here. Mountains. Yeah, it's an obstacle card. It is not an easy thing to do. It's gonna take a little time. You don't just run over a mountain in a day, most of us anyway. 
So, but now you know where to begin and you know what this is about and you know to get yourself untangled from the web of entanglements and to treat yourself well and everyone else, even if they've done you wrong. There's no, no room for abuse here. No, we're not gonna go there. You're gonna do the noble thing and stop placing blame. And if you have been, even if it's self-inflicted, um, and turn that around and understand the trickery. Once you pull this thread, you will understand the trickery and be able to <laughs> basically turn this card around and have that stability, the beauty, the lovely emotional recognition from an outside source. And that could be you seeing it from a different perspective, different emotional perspective. Once you get your brain wrapped around this, yeah, you'll be able to let it go. Oh, Aries, my goodness. Whew. All right, well, this is good. This is very, very good. Let's see what else Source would share with you, your Daimon, your creative muse, um, and see what they would share. Hard work is paying off. Oh my goodness, new moon in Capricorn. Well, here we are still in Capricorn season. We've got a couple of more days and <clears throat> it is your hard work is paying off. So whatever you need to do, you are gonna get rewarded. Magnificence. Wow, you are really gonna come into that nobility. This king here. You are amazing, magnificent, and unique, but most importantly, you are enough. <laughs> you got what it takes, Aries. Oh, wow. Whew, that is some big energy. All right, well, yeah, interesting. Best of luck to you. And Go and see what your rising sun, moon, fifth house is and uh, maybe get some more insight on what this message and how to work this through in the most noble manner possible. Those webs can be so sticky. Yeah, very entangling. But you will know because you are strong and capable lucky. All right. Thank you for watching and I hope this resonates in some way. And as always, happy creating.